Miracy. Every coaching certification said, you know, this is about the client. Don't share anything about yourself. And I started to realize that sometimes if I shared my own humanness, they could relate to me better. So I do share that and I do encourage my client family members to do the same. Hello, I'm Melinda Cohen and you're listening to Just Between Coaches. I run a business called The Coaches Console and we're proud to have helped more than 70,000 coaches create profitable and thriving businesses. This is a podcast where we answer burning questions that newer coaches would love to ask a more experienced coach. You know, we start coaching because we have a passion to do something, to help others and live a life of ease, of abundance and fulfillment. And struggle and stress, they really don't fit with these goals. However, I know what it's like trying to find the success that you want and deserve, the struggle, the late nights, the uncertainties, disappointments, the highs and the lows that every business owner, consultant or coach goes through. And most of us would agree that a successful, long-term, sustainable business comes from doing business from the heart and connecting deeply with our clients. But how do we achieve that? And my guest today says, if you don't have enough clients or income, you haven't learned how to do transformational deep dives that connect with your clients heart to heart. If you do, you can stop the marketing, the advertising, and the sales pitches. And so today I've invited Terry Levine. Terry is a business and executive coaching expert and the founder of Heartpreneur. With over 40 years of experience, she's helped more than 6,000 business owners grow their sales, their revenue, and their marketing. She's created Heartpreneur to teach business owners how to do business authentically from the heart and create massive transformation in their lives and in the lives of their clients. She's also written dozens of best selling books, has her own radio and TV show and is a dynamic keynote speaker. Welcome, Terry. I am so glad to be here. Thank you, Melinda. Terry, I'm so excited to have you on the show and to dive into this conversation. But before we get into all that, would you mind sharing with our listeners a little bit about your background and why you became a coach? Oh, yeah. I love that. Thank you. So prior to becoming a coach, I had owned six other multi-million dollar businesses in all different industries sold them all. And then I took a J-O-B in corporate America. I was president of a national healthcare company and I was really miserable for five years. I realized while they loved me and I was getting stock options and bonuses, I wasn't transforming people's lives. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. And I found out about coaching and I realized that's really what was in my heart and what I always was and wanted to do. So, gosh, about 32 years ago, I just said goodbye to corporate America. I started coaching and consulting. I had 30 clients in 30 days, so I knew I was doing the right thing. And I've been doing it happily for all of these years with about 6,200 client family members. Nice. Now, you talk about having that heart-based business. And, you know, in the introduction of you, I talked about how you created Heartpreneur. When you first started out, those first 30 clients in 30 days, have you always taken this same approach or is this an approach that has evolved over time? It is the same exact approach. And I sometimes chuckle because what worked 32 years ago works for my client family members perfectly today, works for me today. And for whatever reason, it's not what the average new coach or consultant is doing. And it's, in my opinion, why they struggle so much to bring on client family members. So what does it mean to have a heart-based business? Let me just make sure that everybody's on the same page here that's listening in. What does that mean? So Heartrepreneur stands for transparency, authenticity, and integrity. What that translates into is doing business heart-to-heart, only extending your hand if you could help someone, only connecting with people in an authentic, transparent way, And using what I call reverse marketing, where people come to you and raise their hand and you're not marketing at people, dumping into their inboxes, spamming them. Instead, they're literally raising their hand and letting you know that they're there and they might want your help. Okay, let's definitely dive into that. 
what does it mean to have that heart-based business? Is it just the way you're coaching or is it how you do everything in your business? Every aspect of your business, from how you connect with clients, how you work with clients, love on them, embrace them, treat them, how you work with people on your team, how you show up in making a big social impact with the funds that you earn through your business. Every aspect of your business becomes heart-based and it becomes natural. And to me, it's the most natural way for a coach to do business. I've done all different industries. However, for coaches, it's a natural fit. And so we talked about that transformational deep dive. But for those newer coaches out there, that's who we've designed this show for. And they're like, okay, this sounds right up my alley because I know so many coaches, they just, they want to be authentic. They want to connect at that level. So what do they do? How do they do this? What does that transformational deep dive mean? So first, I'm going to actually be a little backwards and tell you what doesn't work. And unfortunately, this is what I see in here every day. People doing demo coaching, free coaching, any of these kinds of things, virtual coffees, going to networking groups and bringing tons of business cards. In my experience, those are all sales pitches in disguise. If I were an attorney or if I were a surgeon, I wouldn't be going around saying, let me show you what I do. Let me do a demo surgery on you. Instead, I do and teach my client family members to do what we do best. We're coaches. We know how to transform people's lives and in truly doing a breakthrough. So a breakthrough is offering everybody you know, and I mean everybody, a transformational deep dive where you sell nothing, absolutely nothing. You have a transformational conversation with someone, they show up with whatever their biggest issue is, and you coach them with your best coaching skills for 90 minutes to two hours. Usually, before you even finish, they'll say to you, this is the best conversation I have ever had, or how do I get to work with you? And at the end, if they don't say that, you simply say, you know, Melinda, I'm so glad that you had this breakthrough. Would you like to continue having breakthroughs? I can tell you what that looks like. If you say yes, we talk about it. If you say no, I say, Melinda, who do you know that we can pass this transformational gift to? And I will tell you one quick thing, Melinda, I have a brand new coach. And I mean, brand new, like been in the industry nine days and already did four of these sessions and has two $5,000 clients and didn't sell a thing. And I love that because it's more of an invitation in our community. We don't want to pressure them. We don't want to sell them. It's just an invitation. When you have provided the value, when you have shown up the way that you show up, then it's just an invitation. And I love how you said, usually you don't even have to invite them. They're saying, hey, this is amazing. How do I get more of this? And they're inviting themselves. That's what you meant earlier when you said they're raising their hands. You're not having to market at them, but they're saying, how do I get more of this? Yes. And that comes from, I call it reverse marketing. It's just my belief that there are people out there who want what you have. They just don't really know what that is. So do your best coaching. Listen, I don't want to wake up in the morning and sell and market. I just want to coach. And that's all I do. All I'm doing is offering value, no law of reciprocation whatsoever, reciprocity. And then if I feel I can help you further, I extend my hand and I simply make a heart to heart connection and say, Hey, I think I could help you further. If you're interested, I can tell you more. And if not, no worries. Who else do you know? And I love that because it's actually not even an either or. It can be an invitation to them. And you can also still say, And by the way, who else do you know? So it could be, Let's start working with you. And who's the next person to have this amazing experience? Exactly. And because this experience is a true gift and a true transformation, People are very happy to say to a friend or another employee or colleague or family member, oh my gosh, I just had the most amazing conversation. The person I spoke to said they'd be willing to do the same for you. Can I introduce you? It's very simple. I think it's important to point out that that moment where after this transformational conversation, where they had an incredible experience. Like you said, most of them are going to say, you know what, this is amazing. How do I get more of this? And then you can talk about how you work with your clients and what that looks like. But if they don't ask, I think it's important for the new coaches out there to know it's okay for you to make that invitation. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I really think if you're not making that invitation, 
you're being selfish. And I'll tell you what I think about that because I, I, I want people to really try this on. If you were to come to my home and you had a long trip, I would say to you, oh, would you like some water, iced tea, lemonade? I would extend my hand. If you say, no, thank you, I don't pitch you or overcome your objection. Maybe you're not thirsty. Maybe you don't like any of those things. First of all, I don't take it personally. And second of all, I don't try and talk you into it. I say, no problem. If you don't make that offer, then I'm sitting there with you know great lemonade, iced tea, water, and I'm being incredibly selfish. So I I really want people to understand if we're really in the business of transformation, it's our responsibility to offer transformation. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And with the new coaches that I work with, a lot of times their doubts really get the best of them. And they're like, well, who am I? I'm just getting started. Why would they listen to me? What do you tell a new coach that's experiencing those doubts that has that hesitation to even have these transformational deep dive conversations? Great question. So what I recommend for a brand new coach is that they do an assessment of their skills, their talents, literally decade by decade. What were you good at from zero to 10? Like I was an imaginative kid that constantly put on plays and I could imitate all these different voices. So I'm really good at having fun and interacting. Then what were you good at the next decade? However, between 10 and 20, I started to realize that I was really good at listening to people and I was also a very good communicator. So do this decade by decade, take a really good assessment of yourself and then ask yourself, what skills and talents do I have? What's showing up? What have I learned? What seminars have I gone to? What books have I read? What training have I had both maybe college and outside of college? What else do people tell me I'm good at? Really listen and hear what other people have to say. And then understand this. You know more of something than the person in front of you. Coaching comes from not necessarily even learning coaching skills, which might sound odd to people. It comes from being an incredible listener, deeply caring about the human being in front of you, and then just tapping into your intuition and saying, What can I do or say to move this person I care about forward? And those things come naturally. When I first started, this is embarrassing. I'll I'll burn the curtain here, Melinda. Um, I had pages and pages of notes and notebooks on the floor from all the coach training schools I went to. And with my first two clients, I realized I heard nothing. I didn't know what they were saying. I was looking for the next powerful question or request. I threw that in the garbage And now I just show up. And even then, third client, I just became fully present and said, I have the power to really listen and I will know what to do and say. And I remember that third session, at the end of the session, the client said, you're brilliant. And I didn't do anything brilliant. I listened and asked some powerful questions. Just great coaching at its best right there. And I love that when we can do this self-assessment, we truly take stock in everything that makes us uniquely designed to serve the people that resonate with us, that want to work with us, that want the change and are committed to it. And we're the only ones uniquely designed in this way. And that's everything that we bring to the table. And I love how it begins to squish the fears and the doubts. And for newer coaches, this might be something that you have to revisit on a daily basis to remind yourself of this as you put yourself out there and step forward. And the more breakthrough sessions you do, in my experience, the better you will become at coaching. And in addition to that, the confidence muscle will build because you'll hear people say things like, oh my gosh, Melinda, this was life-changing or this was amazing. I can't believe you gave me this gift. And you'll start to gain that confidence. So just get out there and start doing breakthroughs. You do have to learn how. That's the only thing. You're not doing the typical demo or sales pitch. You've got to make sure that you unlearn that and leave that behind. Yeah, because just demonstrating coaching and giving people a taste, I find that it leaves them with this false sense of accomplishment, but not a true transformation. Exactly. And the minute we show up, and we really help someone transform, that's the game changer right there. Now, you've been talking with this in reference to, I'll call them prospects, potential clients, those that are interested but have not yet said yes. 
But I also get that you're doing the same kind of conversations once they do become a client. You just keep doing more of this in different aspects, different areas of their life. Is that right? Yeah. And that's the cool thing. This skill, it's one skill. It never changes. It's breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough before they're a client and while they're a client. So if everything you do creates, sometimes it's a smaller transformation and it builds to a larger one. Everything you do transforms someone through a conversation. That's what we want to show up and do. That's why we got into this business, right? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Now, what if... Let's talk about a a scenario that a new coach might encounter. And this, I say new coach, but this could be any coach at any level, at any stage, however long you've been in business. But let's say that, you know, you want to create this deep connection, heart to heart connection with your clients. And the client is just, they're resistant. They're not going there. How does a coach handle that situation? Well, first is the honesty. That's the integrity and the transparency and being willing to have some of those difficult conversations. We're not someone's friend. We're being paid a good amount of money, typically, to transform a life. So I'll just use a real situation. A couple of years ago, I had this client who, no matter what happened, whether I said it or somebody said it, would tell you 50 reasons why that wouldn't work. And I just said very lovingly and yet very honestly to the client, if you want to keep being righteous and you want to know more than anyone in the universe... You may do that. However, you're wasting your coaching dollars. So I would tell you no longer to work with me. However, if you are going to let go a bit and be more open and more curious, then I can help you transform. That's up to you. And so sometimes if a client's not connecting in that deep way, are there other approaches or other things as those new coaches are developing their muscles and their skills that they can use to create the container for that client to connect in that more deeply, more heart way, or maybe be more vulnerable? Yes. Every coaching certification said, you know, this is about the client. Don't share anything about yourself. And I started to realize that sometimes if I shared my own humanness, they could relate to me better. So I do share that. And I do encourage my client family members to do the same. Look, I understand you. I've been where you were. I get you. I have felt that in my life. May I share my experience and what I've done? And I will tell you that that creates this bond with me and my client family members. I have had 96% of my client family members stay with me for four or more years. I have many that have been with me for over 30 years. Why is that? They're family. We're on the journey together. They evolve. Their business evolves. They change. They're not the same person they were two months ago, five years ago. So to create that safe space, in my opinion, you need to do two things. One is you need to be vulnerable and transparent yourself. If you're asking the other person to do that, you need to do it. And second of all, you need to be a bit fearless. You may say some things that are a bit ouchy because you're not there to be their friend. And I always tell my client family members, I'm saying this with love. At first, it may feel like, whoops, that hurts. And I'm asking you to really let it in. And that's the being fearless part. And that's what creates the deepest relationships we have. And that's that truthfulness, that transparency with massive compassion, because a lot of people in their lives may not be asking those questions or making those statements or reflecting things back to them. I remember one time I was on a conversation with one of my coaches back in the early days, and he hit that nail right on the head. I got so furious, I hung up on him. I've never done that since. And I took a deep breath, and I was so mad at him. And after that deep breath, I was like, you know what? That's exactly right. That's exactly the core of what I've been struggling with. I dialed his number. It only took a few minutes. And then we continued on the conversation. And he didn't know that I would actually call him back. He had a hunch that I would. He was holding space that I would. And he was willing to go there. That's that being fearless. It's like, that's our job as the coach. It's a fine line that we walk in holding this space. And I think we have to bring our intuition as well to the conversation to know, because it's going to be different for every one of our clients. Can you say more about that? Yes. And I'm really glad you brought up intuition. So this ties in beautifully. A big part of coaching, in my experience, is trusting in yourself 
and trusting in divine intelligence. So what do I mean by that? Not to be too woo-woo. We have answers within ourselves as the coach that sometimes we might even hold back almost unconsciously. It's like, oh, I'd really like to say this, but oh, Melinda might not want to hear that. I just trust that my client family members, because I've screened them and I've accepted the right people, they will allow me to speak from intuition. They will try it on. So even if we're doing a breakthrough session and you haven't committed to be a client family member, and I really feel something, I will ask permission and I'll say, Melinda, something is really, really coming up for me. It just intuitively feels like something I want to share. Do I have your permission? Trust yourself, trust your intuition, and allow your client family members to give you permission to go deep with them. So when you take someone on or start a breakthrough, be sure you tell them how it works. Be sure you ask for that permission and establish that trust. I love it. A lot of magic can begin to be created. And I love the way you're positioning this and the way you're describing it with these transformational deep dives and these breakthrough conversations. They might have a conversation in one area, but it's easy to say, okay, well, I'm struggling over here. So help me over here. And it just makes for a natural transition to another area or the next evolution of something. Yeah. And to me, that's like so exciting that I'm as open as the client. I'm open and curious and I don't know where we're going. And if we're both willing to just be open and curious, oh my gosh, that's where the breakthroughs happen. I love it. Now, I just want to summarize. So first we talked about having a heart-based business and about the transparency, the authenticity, the integrity. I love how you called it reverse marketing so that we're not marketing at people, but they're raising their hands to say, hey, can you help me have this transformation? And you really talked about creating those transformational deep dives and those breakthrough conversations. It's more than just demonstrating coaching or giving a little sample or a taste of it. It's not a sales pitch in disguise, but it's a very intentional conversation that leads to breakthroughs and transformations. And, and we talked about how when newer coaches or any coaches, when they've got those fears, those doubts that might get the best of them to do that self-assessment, to really see how we are better at something or how we know more of something than the person sitting in front of us and what we're uniquely designed to bring to the table. And then I love how we got into how do we create those deep connections through our honesty, through how we're sharing our own humanness and bringing our intuition to the conversation so that we can model for them how to do it. And Terry, do you have any other parting words or anything, any advice that you would pass on to a newer coach? Yeah, I'm going to say something that may be a little ouchy. That's, uh, <laughs> that's how I roll. Uh, the first thing I would say is stop following what everyone else is doing. And I really mean that. It may work for them and may not work for you. And in most cases, in my experience, it may not work at all. The second thing is do what feels transparent and authentic and in integrity to you. So I'll give you an example. I do not like when people start DMing me on any social media platform. I didn't give you permission. It's not like email marketing where I opted in and I find it really disturbing. However, some of my clients really like that. Just ask yourself. It doesn't mean because other people are doing it that you need to do it. Ask yourself what feels more authentic. I prefer, and this works extremely well, to just keep creating and giving away my best content and my best value. I prefer to give webinars and seminars and to be you know, guests on podcasts, whatever it might be, to write blogs, to give away special reports, tools, checklists, templates, just to give, give, give. So what I tell people is, if you don't have enough prospects or enough client family members, you're not creating enough value in education. So put your focus on giving more and I give all my best stuff away. It's not an exaggeration. I have no fear about giving my best stuff away. That's my model and that's what my clients use. And I hope that there'll be a piece of that that listeners can take with them, Melinda. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to this episode of Just Between Coaches. Terry, thank you so much for this amazing conversation about heart-based coaching, about 
these deep conversations, these breakthrough transformational conversations. And if you want to find out more about Terry and the work that she does, you can find out more at her website at sixfigsin6months.com. That's the number six, F-I-G-S, in the number six again, months. Dot com six figs and six months.com Terry thank you so much for coming to the show it's been a pleasure thank you Melinda for the great work that you do in the world I'm Melinda Cohen and you've been listening to just between coaches just between coaches is part of the mayor CFM podcast network which also includes such shows as once upon a business and making it this episode was produced by Cynthia lamb I wrote this episode with Mishi Lance she assembled the episode Danny Innie is our executive producer and post-production was by Post Office Sound. To follow upcoming great episodes on Just Between Coaches, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help get these ideas to more people.